And then, since we talk about the polymer bundle, I'm going to uh, show a plot of elastic modulus versus temperature for typical polymers, which including the binder material that you are adding for to shape your ceramic paste. Okay, here I'm showing a plot. The horizontal axis is still what? Horizontal axis is still temperature in degree C. Okay. The vertical axis is what? Relaxation modulus. It's essentially modulus of the polymer after you let it sit a little while, at the temperature a little while, for it to kind of like reach a stable state. Okay. And then what we see is this type of shape. But generally, the lower the temperature, the what? The lower the temperature, the higher the modulus. The higher the temperature, the lower the modulus. Make sense? For most material, the higher the temperature becomes softer. Make sense? Most material. And then let's go to the extreme. If we are above TM, where's TM? Here, right? If we are above the TM for polymer, if we are above the TM, what is the polymer state? Liquid? Solid? Liquid. Not only liquid, above TM means it is a so called free flowing, low viscosity liquid, right? It's completely flow, which means if it's completely like a liquid, very low viscosity, what about the modulus? It should be what? You see, 10 to the minus 4, almost negligible. Liquid cannot sustain any stress. Make sense? Any so called sh shear or pencil stress. Liquid can sustain compressive, but the shear or compress or pencil, liquid just flows. Make sense? That's what you expect, right? Above TM, you have almost no modulus. And then below the TM, below the TM, we have a Significant increase in what? Below TM, I have a significant increase in what? In the modulus, okay? So, uh, around here region, we would say the polymer would uh, what? Melt, become a, I would call it a quote-unquote viscous flowing liquid because we are in this region, we are slightly what? We are slightly what? Below our, in this region, below our above TM. So slow slightly below TM. So the polymer below is TM because it's like partial crystalline, partial amorphous. So below the TM is not, it's going to have still some with flow capability. Because the polymer is a large molecule, you cannot make it completely crystalline, right? There will be always some portion that are still behaving like a so-called undercooled or viscous liquid. Mm -hmm. Then, if we go further decrease in temperature, further decrease in temperature, now the polymer, the modulus in this range, it's higher than this range. The modulus become lower. We would call this state so-called rubber. The polymer now behaves like a rubber. Let me ask you this. For typical rubber, like a rubber band, compare with your typical plastic container, which one has higher with, uh, modulus? Rubber band? or your typical home container plastic, which one have higher modulus? The typical plastic container, right? Higher modulus. The rubber band has low modulus, which means a little bit of stress, it would elastically change a lot. Make sense? So you see, in the so-called rubbery state, the material behaves like, uh, the polymer behaves like a rubber. The so-called uh, modulus is higher than viscous liquid, but it's lower than the typical plastic. You can stretch a lot, 
but it can still sustain some stress, not like uh, you pull it, it drops continuously. Make sense? So that's kind of rubbery, highly elastic state. And then if we keep reducing the temperature, think of rubber. When you put a rubber into deep freeze, what would happen to the rubber? It kind of start to lose its what? Flexibility or elasticity, right? That's what happened, okay? So called become typical plastic or so called a viscoelastic region. We would have the polymer would now behave like a so called retail yourself leather. Think, can you stretch leather like a rubber band? Can you typically like your shoe, leather shoe, does it mm -hmm, like this? No, right? Your typical leather shoe doesn't behave like this. You stretch a little bit, it becomes three, four times, five times longer. That's typical. So leather, like a leather, like a typical plastic is at a temperature that is further below in temperature. And actually within this leathery state, we would have a so-called TG. The leather, as we go, become TG. And then if we further reduce in temperature, we are going to transform into what? Glass. The typical rigid, brittle glass. This is kind of a plot that shows the change in modulus, how rigid the plastic is versus temperature. Now let's think of this again. When we are really low temperature, well below Tg, the material has what? High modulus. The material behave like a rigid, brittle glass. Of course, if it's polymer, it may also have some crystalline component in it. But the rest of the most portion are behave like a rigid, brittle glass below Tg. Okay. And then when we're getting closer to Tg, Okay, some of the rigid, brittle, glassy portion become viscous liquid, right? Then we are into so-called leathery. The material behave, the polymer behave like a leather. You can stretch a little. The typical plastic, right? Your typical plastic container, you can bend back and forth, but you cannot do this. You cannot stretch it five, ten times, right? That's a typical plastic behavior, behave like a leather. Think of leather, your leather shoe. You cannot stretch it five, ten times, the skin. On the other hand, if we keep increasing the temperature, keep increasing the temperature, but still below TM, as we increase the temperature, the viscous liquid become what? Lower and lower in viscosity, make sense? The amorphous portion become lower and lower in viscosity. Now, the material behave like a rubber. Even lower, even lower what? Modulus, but at the same time, it's highly so-called elastic. Think of rubber band. Rubber band, I one inch long, I can easily stretch it into five inches long or even 10 inches long. Highly viscous, but can you do that for leather? No, right? That all your typical plastic container, you cannot do it. You can do a little bit, five, ten percent, twenty percent, but not five hundred, one thousand percent. And then, if we keep increasing temperature, getting close or very go even beyond TM, the viscous liquid now become what? Free flowing liquid. The remaining crystalline portion now also become free flowing liquid. Now we are just pure liquid, depending on viscosity, depending on temperature. Make sense? So that's a typical behavior for the plastics, which we use as for our course in ceramics, we use the plastics as our what? Binder. To bind the ceramic particles together because ceramic particle itself doesn't have plasticity. We shape them, we can do extrusion, pressing, all that stuff. Okay? And it's 
the property is essentially given by the polymer binder that we added in there. 